Okay, so we're going to get to the really exciting NASDAQ ceremony bit in yes. just a moment. But before we do all of that, we want to talk about a couple of different things. Um, how did you get started in business? Um, I was just, I mean, there's, there's no particular formula. I was always, as a kid, just interested in, in doing things, um, building things, making things. In college, I was with friends just making bad pieces of software that nobody ever used. And, uh, you know, most of, I left college about eight years ago. Um, and I didn't start anything particularly significant. It didn't particularly... Did you, did, you, did you have any idea what you wanted to do or where you were? No, I, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. The only thing that I, that I knew was that I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I wanted to work for myself and try and build things that I would be passionate about. And uh, eventually, after many failures, I stumbled upon something that... Uh, that seem to begin to work. Yeah, it's working out pretty okay, I think. I think, do <laughs> think you're doing well. He's doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Adam, um, what we really want to talk about with you is the very exciting NASDAQ Entrepreneur Center. Yes. What is that? Because you've got an audience here of people who are going to be the all, paddies all, of the future. Well, they're all going to be on NASDAQ one day. I'm looking forward to it. So, um, no, I mean, NASDAQ is an entrepreneurial company. We were the first electronic exchange in the world. And we've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. That's why we want to be here as well. But we've launched something called the Entrepreneurial Center. And the whole idea of the Entrepreneurial Center is uh, to go back to the roots uh, and to really try to give back to the community. So it's a non-profit organization. It's a, a foundation. And the whole idea is really to bring uh, entrepreneurs closer to entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs closer to academia, uh, entrepreneurs closer to corporates, and to make sure that there's a better exchange of information, know-how, and education to make sure that the entrepreneurs have a better foundation to grow. So uh, how does it work then? So it's, it's basically a, a space that we've set up in, in, uh, in San Francisco. It's a fantastic space. Uh, maybe we can do something there, Patty, one day. Uh, but the whole idea, basically, it's, it's run as a non-profit, and the whole idea is to have continuous academic progress with universities and to make sure that entrepreneurs are tapping into the know-how that we have through our exchange, which are companies that are listed with us, our environment in terms of advisors and so on that are working with us on a daily basis, giving back to these entrepreneurs. Uh, so we're in the early days, and we'll see how it evolves, but it's looking very promising, and it was launched at the end of September. Okay, so the brightest and the best, I assume, will be invited to apply to come and, and do some work there. Well, it's always difficult to say who the, who the best is and who the brightest is, but uh, we're definitely trying to broaden it. It's not only for the U.S., it's also for European entrepreneurs. So the idea is really to make this as broad as possible, and. Only the market can tell in the end uh, who's the best and who's the brightest in terms of who will succeed. And mm -hmm. I think you can measure success in so many different ways. Not all companies have to list. Uh, not all companies have to make money. Uh, there are fantastic entrepreneurs out there doing great things in different ways. Okay. Um, I'm just conscious of the audience that we have, and they're, they're looking at you and, and what you've achieved, Paddy. I just wonder what your advice would be to people. I mean, go get a good job, start from a stable base, or, you know, flitter around for a while and see what you enjoy. What would be the way to do it? I, I mean, I think ultimately, and it sounds corny, you've just got to follow your own gut or your own heart. I mean, if you look at the hard statistics, the best advice anybody could give you is stay in education as long as you can, because the returns in that education will be higher. You should probably go work for a company. Um, and then if you want to become an entrepreneur, you should consider doing it when you're about in your mid uh, in your mid 30s That's at least what the statistics say that doesn't mean that people don't drop out of high school and drop out of college and do incredible things But ultimately if you're fortunate enough You should try and pursue as best you can in my view because it will make you the happiest Something that you're truly passionate about you don't always get that choice and you so certainly don't always get that choice early in your career when you're trying to get a kind of a head start. Certainly many of the things that I did straight out of college, I wouldn't necessarily say they were the most passionate things. They were just things that I tried and they didn't really work out. And you learn a lot from those mistakes. Did you have a fear of failure? Um, I had a fear of not, not, not trying. So failure, you know, a fear of failure, I think, holds people ultimately back. And as, as a company, there's nearly 150 of us uh, in, our, in our headquarters in Dublin. Um, 
we make mistakes absolutely every single day, and if you're not prepared to fail or if you're not prepared to make mistakes, I think it's very difficult uh, to progress. You just absolutely have to be prepared uh, to make mistakes, to learn from those mistakes, to improve, and to build ultimately a better product. Adam, how do you feel about failure? I mean, you, you deal with uh, companies from all over the world, so yeah. do you think that there's a different attitude in different parts of the world to failure? Absolutely, I think. Uh, I read a statistic that in, in India, when, uh, when the CEO says something, all the employees uh, abide to that, you know, in the law. And I think in Sweden, where I reside, 7% uh, of the employees believe what the, uh, the CEO says is right. So I think, you know, I think uh, at the end of the day, you have to dare to fail. Uh, we do many projects at NASDAQ that fail, but we do more that succeed. And I think but you learn through your failures and you have to dare to, uh, to take on new projects, new endeavors, and uh, whether they're small or large uh, and in different shapes. And I think at the end of the day, failures, you know, you learn a lot from failures. And I think many of the great entrepreneurs have many failures behind them uh, until they get it right. How, I was asking um, Ed earlier on, you know, when Pixar work on a movie, how do they know it's going to work? When you see businesses starting up, what is it? What's that magic ingredient that tells you this is going to work? Well, there's so many different parameters. We tend to measure it by how, when we start making money. Uh, it's balance but, sheets, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think what was it Steve Jobs said? It was the best thing that ever happened to him, getting fired from Apple to start Pixar or to work with Pixar. So there's all different forms of failures and successes that me are measured in different ways. But, you know, so many companies are growing by number of users. Uh, so many companies are growing in different dimensions. So it's difficult to measure exactly. But you have to set goals and you have to measure those goals on a regular basis and uh, make sure that you uh, have a clear definition of how you get there. Paddy, have you got an answer? What's the magic ingredient? Or what, what is it when you're looking at a story that tells you this is going to work? Oh, you can never know. You just, you ultimately, I, I don't think you ever know. I don't think you ever Can know. I suggest to you, because yeah. I remember I was, in, I was yeah. in working radio when you were just starting out, and you were in occasionally, and people said to me, that's Paddy, he's doing things, it doesn't really matter what he's doing, but he's going to do something brilliant. And, it was the, and I'm not saying that to, to, to blow smoke, but it, it, was, it was the person as opposed to the idea. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure, but I mean, I can be a complete asshole sometimes. Um, so I'm not, you know, I'm not everybody's. What is it, kettle of fish? That's not, is that, that's not <laughs> my point bag is, of though, tea. my point is that even if you saw an idea that was crap, yeah. if the person, if the person was somebody you could believe oh, in, does I, that I, change? I, yeah, but 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 I mean, I hate to be kind of pessimistic, but you know, I've seen incredible entrepreneurs build a company once, and then go again with an incredible team and brilliant investors and everything going for them and it doesn't work out. The timing could be wrong, they could just be unlucky. And then sometimes, I mean, I, I won't name the company, but I've you know, met a highly impetulant 24-year-old who, uh, who had a kind of a simple mobile app and everything was stacked against this kid succeeding and he's built one of the most kind of successful companies of the last, uh, of the last three years. And sometimes, so sometimes you just can't, uh, you can't tell. There's so many kind of uh, circumstances. And the most important thing ultimately is that you're always prepared to learn. Um, if you think for one moment that you know how to do things, that you have the answers, I mean, you're just doomed to failure. You can't, every single day you have to get up and question yourself and question what you're doing and question what you believe uh, and try and learn new things. And if you're not prepared to do those things, I think you ultimately won't go very far in whatever you're doing, whether you're becoming, whether you want to be an entrepreneur or whether you want to progress in whatever career uh, you choose. Just, just on careers before we finish, because I know Marta, who put this whole night together, will give out to me if I don't, if I don't, if I don't say it. Um, but over the course of the last, um, so we're moving the Web Summit to Lisbon. But we are an Irish company. We're building gatherings of people all over the world, most of the fastest growing technology company, uh, conferences in Asia and in the United States uh, are events that we are building. And that includes India as well. And in the coming years, we'll launch more conferences all over the world in many, many different industries. In order to do that, 
we need an incredible team of people, both very, very experienced people who've moved to Dublin from all over the world to work with us, and also some absolutely incredibly ambitious and hardworking people who've left the incredible universities and ITs in this country uh, and joined us. Uh, we've hired over 70 people this year. Many of those people are only starting out their careers, and they're ultimately the people that have put most of the Web Summit and what you see here this evening uh, together. Um, so if you're thinking of, of doing anything after college, you're thinking about a career, um, you'd really make Marta's day uh, by going on to the careers site and seeing if there's a position in engineering or in data science or in design or in business development or in sales or in marketing that might be of interest to you. Um, that's it. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, that's great news. That's great news for everybody here. So the company is staying in Ireland. That's the message. Oh, yeah, the company is absolutely staying in Ireland. I think this is an incredible country to build, uh, a, build a great success story. Too many of the success stories of the last few years that have been built by Irish entrepreneurs have been built from New York or built from Silicon Valley or built from London. Over the last 30 years, the, there have been too few success stories coming out of Ireland, and we're incredibly determined that we're going to build something fantastic over the coming years. Uh, and we're not afraid to say that, and we really believe we can. Great. We'll and we'll list you on NASDAQ, buddy. Thanks. We'll, we'll wait for that you. moment. We'll come back for that moment. Yeah. Well, maybe not to Dublin, but. Um, Paddy, thank you so much. And Adam, thank you as well.